Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Very special one tonight because this is our 100th episode. And uh, uh, so there is, uh, it's quite a milestone. Uh, just to put it in context, we started this two years and two days ago uh, when the, uh, the world was upside down and uh, we still didn't understand what the heck was going on with this pandemic thing. It wasn't even a pandemic then. It was just sort of like something weird, something very mysterious. And we were all kind of hunkering down and uh, trying to not infect each other. And um, New York City at that time was rather bizarre place to be because people were dying by the thousands. They were, uh, you know, they had refrigerated trucks to handle the uh, the, the bodies that they because they couldn't uh, didn't have a place to put them, and uh, uh, it was uh, it was it was mayhem. And so we had a a desire to get together in sort of a mutually supportive network to explore this thing that we like so much, these Chinese internal martial arts, Qigong and the like. And, and I wanted to share with you at that time and still do the, uh, the alchemy of it. That is how we can go from something which is, you know, fairly, uh, mechanical and take it into a realm where you're activating your energy, where you are moving into a realm where you're getting into body, mind, spirit integration. And so all the classes that have occurred since then uh, have kind of had that as our, our driving force there. And uh, we still have stuff going on and, but we, are, it's no longer the huge mystery it was two years ago. So we're, uh, we're, we're pressing forward and, and we're still exploring the, uh, the hidden realms of Taiji Chuan and trying to take the mysteries, the things that are kind of hidden in the, the metaphors of the, of the descriptions and try to bring them out so that we can actually use them in our lives. And um, so each step of the way, we're, we're taking up a different topic. And going forward, I would like to encourage people to uh, provide suggestions for where they want to go with you know, what we do next, any areas that you'd like to address. And uh, just uh, really open to suggestions. I also want to thank everybody who's been very supportive of the uh, of the program, giving your donations, and uh, uh, appreciate that. And anybody who would like to uh, to donate, uh, you can send it to PayPal. Use PayPal, and and uh, that's at tcalchemy at aol.com. That's the the handle there or Venmo, which is Richard-Barrett-66. And um, so if you, uh, if you want to, to, to donate, appreciate that. It keeps the, uh, uh, it keeps the, the wheels greased and uh, the, the machine moving along. So uh, today what I'd like to do is to go into the Wayback Machine again and one of the things, first things we covered was a set of exercises that, that I um, came up with to kind of restore range of motion to particularly to the joints, the back and the joints, but also to provide a set of exercises that inculcates good habits for your Kung Fu. So the, these different exercises, we call it reclaiming lost territory because we're, we're, as we get older, we tend to shrink and close up. And what we wanna do is, 
is to reclaim that territory. We want to restore the range of motion that we had previously. And if you do these exercises regularly, you'll find that to be the case. It also provides a very uh, powerful platform for anything else you're doing in your in your kung fu. So, um, what I'd like to do is to go over those that set of exercises, and we haven't done those in a long time. And um, but I'd also like to incorporate and integrate a lot of the stuff we've covered since then. And um, uh, some of it you'll remember, some of it you won't. But uh, if you don't, please make note and uh, ask me, and we can cover it afterward. We want to, to see how we can fit in to this set of exercises a lot of these subtler principles that inform the kung fu. So that is, we're we're taking the you know what is is a useful set of you know calisthenics and and making it into something which is a lot more uh, uh, energetically aware and more effective. It, it allows you to access your Kung Fu, your, yeah, your, your Kung Fu as you're, as you're doing these things. And so uh, let's, uh, let's just stand up and we're going to, uh, we're going to go through those exercises. And I will talk you through it. So we're going to begin, put your right foot forward, feel the ball of the right foot, and push your right knee over the ball, set that. So the right knee is not going to move. And release your spiral down, release your claw, pick up your left heel. So what's happening is you got about 99% of your weight or more on that right leg. So you wanna really feel that. We wanna get it so that the, the butt doesn't kick out to the sides. So you're feeling the support coming on the inside of the foot primarily. It's still spread out throughout the whole foot, but you wanna feel that located on the ball of the foot. And so the, all the action is gonna be happening here at the hip joint. So we're doing that without moving it all to the side. And we're just spiraling, releasing down, down, down. So there's, the body will want to pop up, but <laughs> we just give, the, give the, the intention there of down, down, down. So you're going back and forth and it's, you're not, forcing anything, you're just swaying in the breeze as you know, like, uh, like, Doran, uh, like a door on hinges. So just rotating from this hinge, from this, uh, this ball joint at your hip. And the idea here is we're learning to trust the leg, learning to trust the support of the leg, particularly on the anterior part, the front of the leg. So we wanna let go of your butt tension, let go of, of your back tension as you're doing this. Back and forth, very nice and easy. And the whole emphasis is on sung. It's on releasing, sitting down into that leg and, and allowing the support to be a passive support. You're not pushing away from the earth, you're just sinking down. And then you're going to go into your back foot now. So feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, and pick up the heel of the front foot. So now you got all of your weight. And really important that you empty out the leg. You empty out the, the front leg here, and then the previous one in the back leg, just so that you really focus on that one leg. And we're developing confidence in the capacity to support ourselves on one leg, while at the same time releasing muscular tension. So this is, can be paradoxical to the body-mind because uh, it associates work with tension. But we're saying, no, we're just going to release. So you 
The knee, notice that the knee is not moving. Everything's happening here at the, at the quad. So nice and relaxed, nice and easy. You're ah, breathing, you're sitting down in that leg and everything is flowing back and forth. Nice and easy. Keep the weight over the ball of the foot primarily. And that keeps you centered. You're rotating on your central axis. Good. So now we're going to step forward with the left foot and feel the ball of the left foot. Set the left knee and release down into the quad. Pick up your back heel. So here again, we have all the weights in the left leg. And we're moving. The body is turning. And as you do this, you're relaxing your lower back, relaxing your butt, relaxing your legs. It's uh, the idea is you're not pushing away from the earth. That's kind of a yang impulse. We're going the opposite direction. We're going yin here. Yin, 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 down, down, down. Like, ooh, ooh dropping, but capable of a very powerful motion, even though we are sunk, we're sung. There's no weight in the back leg. So you're really learning to trust that front leg there, learning to trust being supported by one leg. And notice, also that as you do that, as you relax your butt, you relax your back, relax your shoulders, and everything is soon. It, you can let go of extraneous muscular tension the more you can learn to trust the yin support of that leg. Now we're going into the right leg. So feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, and you're going to spiral down, pick up, the front heel. So you're lightly on the toe there. And we're going to rotate here. Hmm. So there's no, no struggling with this. Don't force anything. It's just you're opening by learning to trust that the yin support of the leg you can then let go of the tension above it in your butt, in your back, your neck, shoulders. And you can also feel that you're working, your legs are working. It's a different kind of thing than say if you're doing a, uh, you're, you're doing a, uh, like a, uh, squat with weights or something where you're pushing away from the floor and coming up. This is different. You're, uh, you're dropping down and feeling that support, which actually is more work than the, the young impulse. It actually develops your legs a whole lot more. Okay, good. And bring your feet shoulder width. And just take a moment and just feel into the stillness. And notice your hands, just feel the chi that's already happening there. Reach for the crown of your head, feel the weight over the balls of your feet, feel your central equilibrium. Now we're going to open the jade pillow gate. So if you remember, the jade pillow gate is right here at the base of the base of the skull, right where the spine enters into the foramen magnum, the big hole there in, in your cranium. And uh, so that point is a very important energy center. And by opening that up, you release the spirit of vitality. So the, the whole system comes energized just by opening that up. And we have, we have a tendency to to lift the chin and kink the hose <clears throat> at the neck. 
consequently, there's there's tension there, and it can create a lot of problems. Excuse me, let me get a drink. <coughs> So the um, opening the jade pillow gate. So if you put the finger there and you just feel that, want to straighten your, your head up, tuck the chin in, feel that point there and then lift the chin and feel what that feels like to, to lift that. Because right now we're kinking the hose consciously. We're intentionally doing that. So now that we can feel what it feels like also to go the opposite direction and really open it up. And here you're gonna feel lengthening in the tissues in your neck. You're gonna feel the muscles and the connective tissue lengthening as you do that. Be very conscious. So the pivot point is way up here at the top of the neck. So rather than bobbing the head like this where you're pivoting from down here, you're going way up to C1, cervix, cervical spine one, your atlas, and opening up that jade pillow gate. Good. Pause for a moment and just feel into that. Feel the energy that's circulating throughout the whole system. Just in these two little exercises. Now we're going to bring the right arm out. Reach out and reach your head to the left. So you, what you're doing is you're lengthening the tissues along the neck, shoulder, down the arm. And you want to, you can move your head around as you do that. You can also rotate your arm or move it in a different position so you can feel the lengthening going on. You're opening up your shoulders, opening up your neck and creating space. You're reclaiming lost territory. Yeah, and bring the hand down, the head back up and Reach out with your left arm and reach your head to the right. And feel that. Find out where it does you the most good. Rotate your arm so that you can feel different kind of stretches going on there. And rotate. We all have a tendency to bunch up the shoulders and kind of hunch forward, particularly as we get older. So we want to reverse that by lengthening the tissues. Okay, so now I want to roll your head. So you're exploring your range of motion. Don't force anything. You're just rolling your head around and seeing what what that feels like. Notice any spot that it tends to get hung up. And just, if you find something like that, you can just kind of go back and nibbling it over, turn it around, go the other way. You can kind of nibble at the at it and see what you can let go, what tension you can let go. Good. Now we're going to do turkey head or rooster head. And the idea here is that you bring your chin in, stand up straight, and then just jut your chin out. So you're going to feel it closing at the jade pillow gate so that when you draw it back in, you're opening and closing and opening. So you're taking control of something which is happening at a pre-conscious level, you know, throughout your day. There's a tendency to just kind of close that down. So if we 
consciously close it, consciously open it, we can learn to, to control something which has become somewhat of a habit. So then you then are aware of what it feels like to have that jade pillow gate open, to feel the spirit of vitality as it informs the whole system. The, uh, the vagus nerve, um, which is this long nerve which goes on both sides of the body and, and uh, connects up your primary organs, things like your heart and lungs and stomach and intestines, and it initiates at the medulla oblongata right here at the, at the jade pillow gate. So if we open that up, it's, it's reducing the stress that you're putting on your vagus nerve and allowing that to, to flow more freely. And then your vagus nerve ends up in your dantian, ends up in your lower intestine. So there, if you are consciously aware of here and here, and just do that right now, just touch your, your, um, your jade pillow gate and, and put your hand over your dantian and breathe. So what we're doing is we're feeling the beginning and the end of the vagus nerve, which controls most of the parasympathetic activity that uh, is in your internal organs. So it tends to calm you down as you, if you find yourself getting wired up and your vagal tone, the tone of your vagus nerve is directly related to your stress response, how you're able to stress the system and then relax, stress and relax. So that we don't wanna just hang out in a no stress situation. We want to be able to go in and out. Yeah, any, any activity is going to cause stress on the system on your body mind and but we want to be able to control that so that you have what's called use stress which is good stress and not distress which is bad stress so we want to get uh, to get that so if we if you can learn to to get that vagal tone if you can encourage your body mind to do that you will uh, the the whole system will benefit from that and your your health in general is going to benefit from it so we want to, so we've got this kind of action is happening that rooster head, turkey head allows us to get, get control of the, of the jade pillow game. All right, so moving on. So next thing we wanna do is to create space in the spine between the vertebrae. We want to open up, lengthen the spine. And this is something also that gravity has an effect over, over time. And if you've managed to survive many decades, you, your spine will have some, will, will register some of the effects, some of the insults that it's taken over the years. And so by creating more space there, we allow the, energy to flow more freely. So we want to, we're gonna do this by reaching up with the crown of the head, lengthening the spine, standing up straight, and we're gonna slowly go down one at a time. And you can do it, you can hold the different vertebrae and just kind of start with your cervical vertebrae, but better just to just bring your awareness there and just gradually increase your awareness of each vertebra as you relax and let go of the muscular tension and still keeping the support of your, of your spine below it. So you're folding down one at a time. So that's our cervical vertebrae. Now we're gonna to go to the thoracic or chest vertebrae. The knees are bent, relax your lower back and start to wind down. 
using your breath. Each time you exhale, you can let go a little more. You're becoming very conscious of your spine as you do this. Relax your lower back, relax your butt. So now we're going to go to the lumbar vertebrae. And start releasing those. Those are the big vertebrae at the base of the spine. And most of us have five of them. Now straighten your knees and continue to relax and let go. And allow your body to drop with each breath. Don't force anything, just allow the weight of your body to, to allow the tissues to release. Now bend your knees. Sit down and we're going to start coming back up again. So begin with your lumbar. Start at the base there. Bring the pelvis under. So we're bringing the lumbar back, stacking them up. Now we'll go to the thoracic. Now go to the cervical, I have to stack them up. And just relax and feel into that. Notice if you have any butt tension or lower back tension, just let that go and allow yourself to sink into your base, into your legs. Be very soon, very relaxed. These are soft. Feel into the energy in your body. Feel the circulation throughout your body. And bring your hands up, your center line, and open. And arch your back. Reach out, open the shoulders, open the, the, uh, the arms, the chest. Breathe. And allow the weight of your arms to to lengthen the tissues. Uh, 
come up. So we're going to round the back. Hands come up and arch the back. Inhale and exhale as you come down and round the back. And inhale, arch the back. So we're feeling the flexion and extension of the spine. Coordinating that with opening the chest, opening the shoulders, and then closing. Let's do jade pillow or a, a knocking on the door. In this one, you just bring your, set your elbow and bring your fist back like that as if you're knocking on a door behind you. The other hand is going this way. So one, two, and then one, two, go the other way. And this is opening your chest, opening your shoulders. Similar theme here going on a few of these, but they're each addressing different aspects of the of these primary sources of tension that we have. Good, and relax. Just let your arms hang. Feel the chi that's in your hands, feel the blood flow, relax your shoulders. Now we're gonna do the big circles. We're just gonna do a few of these since time is running short here. So the idea is as you inhale, Arms come up, round your back, arms come around, and then arch your back, and then you're gonna round the back as you come down, sink down, hands come forward, and then inhale, and exhale. So here, just do it nice and slow. So you're reaching with the elbows now. Now you're reaching with the wrists. You're reaching with the fingers, arching the back. And as you bow forward, you're going to round your arms, rotate and bring them forward. So the you're coming forward with the backs of your forearms as you come in and up. So we're incorporating opening the chest, opening the shoulders and arching the back. Okay, we're gonna go back the other way now. So arms come back, you're arching your back, feeling, so feeling those hands coming up, reaching, opening. And as your hands come down, palms up, bow forward, round the back. Come back, arch the back, and reach. Arch the back, hands come up and reach. Arch the back, oh, hands come up and close. Uh, 
stop and feel. Now we're going to do small circles. Hands come up, center line, separate. Reach out with your elbows, your wrists, your fingers. Bring your shoulder blades together. So you're really opening the chest, opening the shoulders, and very small circles. Notice how, how small the circles are. You want to really, the movement is happening from the rotator cuff. From the shoulder joint. Good. Palms up and go the other way. Relax, bring your arms down. Again, feel the energy. Just by opening up these constricted areas, we allow the chi to flow much more freely. Feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left. Step in, the left foot. Take a deep breath, hands come up. And as you press down, disappear the chi. Great. Take a seat, please. Cool. Any uh, questions or thoughts on that? Stan, you will have to turn your microphone on, Stan. Thank you. Uh, I noticed that when we go stretching the uh, spine, uh, as I get um, about halfway down or so, this time, it seems like my legs are vibrating, like all heck. The further down, maybe more, and it's uh, and coming up, the same thing, but at a certain point, it disappeared. I know I may have uh, been uh, working out uh, with the thighs a little bit, but I don't think I did anything that extensive. Why would they uh, sort of uh, vibrate or throw them that much uh, um, in that lower portion? Oh, because you're using them correctly. Oh, <laughs> oh well. <laughs> wow. they're, uh, they're they're probably responding to the fact that that oh oh we're get, there, there's a lot of a lot of chi going through right now. Yes. <laughs> so, so yeah. I, I didn't <laughs> think of that. I didn't yeah. think of that. Yeah. Oh my. Oh, thank you. That portion of the spine has a lot of 
stuck stuff that is creating more of a reaction. Mm. I find that my back in certain places. So, uh, so that, that's true. If there, if there's a uh, part of your spine is misaligned, it could create uh, problems if if that part of the body corresponds to the the nerves that are uh, in that part of the spine. So that's a possibility too. Mm. But uh, I, I, of course, my I'm perfectly aligned. <laughs> <laughs> we can scratch that off the list then. I think so. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Oh, uh, thank you. Good. You bet, Scott. Uh, I just mostly wanted to say thanks. I've actually wanted to do that for quite a while, but I didn't want to make everybody go through all those again. But I thought it was great. Yes. Wonderful. Um, and um, I think doing it slowly this time, instead of doing a whole bunch of reps, we were, you know, we were doing it slowly and very deliberately. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought. Uh, you know, that way you can really kind of see what it is we're doing here with these things. It's not like, hey, do, how do I just get through this? It's like, no, no, there is each, each piece of the puzzle here is very powerful in its own way. I am. Um, Go ahead. Yeah, I do, I do them five days a week. And um, I definitely got, definitely got some notice some places where I can improve. And, and so, yeah, it was definitely... Right. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with the other two days, Scott? That, thank you. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I like to just sleep in. Yeah. All day? You sleep in all day? You don't have time to do I this at any know. point of the day? <laughs> <laughs> I no find... workout shaming here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not trying to shame. I'm just trying to share. <laughs> I do it seven days a week, and not because it's a trial, but because it makes my day better every time I do it. Nice. It, there's no degeneration mm. here. It's all regeneration. So I just <laughs> wanted to share that with you, Scott. If you don't do it, you're only depriving yourself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, it's a, it's, it's a good set. It's a good set, and it, it helps to, uh, you yeah. know, Provide a nice foundation for everything else you're doing. Mm. You saying something, there, Lynn? Or are you? I don't know if I am. Are you going to say something? <laughs> I guess I better. The you microphone is lit. <laughs> um, I don't know. This is um. This is just me. I think I I um. Whenever we do the the each vertebrae bending forward, you know, my arms just really get themselves going and nice circles and it feels like I'm unwinding um, the shoulders or some other energy uh, when I do that as well, which I think is a really nice, for me, it's a nice addition. It's obviously something I need to do. Yeah. You know? So it works really well that way. I assume that's okay. That is fabulous. That's fabulous. No, it's great. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that because that's something that, you know, uh, is to be encouraged. You know, any, mm -hmm. anything you can do to kind of let that shoulder tension go because there's so much hidden tension in our bodies mm -hmm. and we're peeling off layers and layer after layer of this stuff as we become more conscious of our doing. It's that unconscious doing that we're, is happening all day that gets us into trouble. And uh, that... Uh, Getting the making a, it a conscious doing enables us to take over control of our autonomic nervous system, and it uh, goes back to that vagal nerve thing that it creates that vagal vagal tone. So uh, it's I think it's a, it's a good thing. You had something, Jonathan? Uh, two things. One, the vagal nerve. It's also involved with the palate, right? As I remember, doesn't it go up there too? That far up? I seem to uh, remember that stimulating the palate. It starts, it starts in your medulla oblongata and it reaches, it goes into the tongue and I right. think into the nose. It goes, it goes, it's, it's the, the term itself comes of, it's called the wanderer because it goes everywhere. So, right. it, so but it initiates in your uh, medulla oblongata. 
uh, at the, right. at the, in, the brain, in the brain stem. And it's but yeah, having, having that right. tongue rise up actually helps it too, I believe. Is that is that not right? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Through the palate, the tongue. I think I says because you know, as you know, my daughter had was tongue tied and and all that and was missing out on that. But the other thing I wanted to say, you know, you know, Rick could do a whole book on while you're watching TV, try this. Uh, <laughs> the uh, expansion of the chest, which we were doing a few weeks ago, you and I, and the idea of using the elbows to help that without pull, pulling them back, because then you get kinked again. So there's just that subtle little expansion without a real pullback, which I found very helpful uh, to kind of, you know, yeah. get into. That's yeah. good, good, good to mention that. Yeah, that just being able to open the chest a little bit. Right. Anything you can do to, to just keep that, ah, keep that softening, opening, releasing. Right. It, it creates, it allows us to breathe easier. It, uh, it takes us out of this and into this. Right. It, uh, it changes your, your, um, your psychological makeup. You become, you open your heart as you, uh, as you do that. So you're more willing to experience life and, and, and its mysteries. Yes, dude. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to say that when we you were doing these exercises, you were really sensing into how the energy in your body was, but you can do that in any activity that you do in life. Let's say you do a different set of exercises or yoga, or you're washing the dishes or walking the dog or whatever you can at any moment tune in to see what is the energy in your body like? Is it kinking anywhere or is it coherent? Is it fluid? Uh, you know, you're cooking breakfast, you know, what is the energy in your body like? It's really a matter of tuning in, uh, not just when you're practicing form, but at any point in my mind. Yeah, no, you're right. <laughs> Valerie. Um, so just very coincidentally, I went to see the chiropractor today, literally less than three hours ago. So running through this set of exercise, exercises with great mindfulness and awareness and consciousness, going back to Sunday's discussion, um, was, <laughs> was really sweet uh, because he didn't quite hit into the shoulders where I needed it. And this really helped. It was like icing on the cake, you know, it just really helped me release out that. Um, mm -hmm. So I got a great deal of relief in, in my shoulders. Um, so good job, boss. Good job. <laughs> Terrific. Terrific. Great. Um, anybody else? Cool. Well, thank you all so much. This has uh, been a an amazing hundred <laughs> hundred yeah. classes here. This is uh, pretty wild that uh, we've gotten this way. It's like, huh? How'd that happen? But it uh, <laughs> it just it kind of went by, and uh, uh, the we got lots more to go, to to go forward. So, uh, yeah, uh, Scott, you got some? I was gonna say in. Uh, two weeks, right? Two weeks, right? Next yeah. week we're uh, we're off. Next week, um, Maria and I will be in uh, uh, in California with uh, with uh, with the boys, and uh, so uh, we'll see you in uh, in two weeks. And uh, great, have fun. Uh, we love you all. Thank uh, you. Uh, you too. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.